Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay because in today's video you will create a data pipeline even if you have no idea how to create one in Airflow. And if you are used to create data pipelines in Airflow, well you will discover a new way that is faster and I'm sure you don't know about. So without further ado, let's get started. My name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best selling instructor on Udemy and if you don't want to miss anything about Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, that will help me a lot. Here's the data pipeline you will create. Pretty simple and straightforward, we have two tasks, fetch activity and print activity. Fetch activity fetches an activity from an API. This API is board API that returns a random activity. For example, here, learn express JS, it's a free API. And then we want to print this activity on the standard output. So two tasks, fetch activity and print activity that interact with an API. But as you will see, we will create this data pipeline in a way that probably you haven't done before. So let's do it. Maybe you don't know that, but I've been working with Astronomer for the past three years. And the reason is because I believe in Airflow and so I believe in Astronomer. Many PMC members are working at Astronomer and you get the latest releases of Airflow as well as security patches and bug fixes. And more importantly, you have some amazing features on top of Airflow that are pretty useful and one of them allows you to create your data pipelines in the easiest possible way. So go to astronomer.io and then get started free. To get access to a 14-day free trial of Astro, you just need to input your email address, then a password, and finally verify your email address to land on this page where you log into Astro with your email address and password. Once you have your Astro account, you just put an organization name. It doesn't matter the name, so let's say YouTube, and then the workspace name could be data engineer. How familiar are you with Apache Airflow? So let's say running Airflow with a managed service in production. And why are you signing up for an Astro trial? Let's say personal learning and development. Then you create your organization, you wait a little bit and you are all set. The next step is to go to Cloud IDE. And this is the new way of creating data pipelines in Airflow, even if you have no idea how to create them. The first step is to create a new project. A project holds pipelines, connections, variables and requirements. So you can have one project with many different data pipelines that need different connections. For example, if you have different APIs and so on. But for now, let's keep things simple. So add a new project and the name of this project could be YouTube and the description data pipelines to fetch activities from an API. You don't want to include the example pipelines and create project. Then as you can see, we have no pipelines. So we need to create our first data pipeline by clicking here, give a name to this pipeline. So let's say API activity and fetch an activity from the board API. Create pipeline. Remember that the name of the pipeline must be unique, okay? You cannot have two data pipelines with the same name. And now we land on this beautiful interface where on the left, you define your tasks and on the right, you see your data pipeline. It's pretty amazing, so stick with me. Remember the data pipeline, the first task to create is fetch activity that fetches a random activity from the board API. So let's do it in the IDE. To create a new task, you need to click add cell and select the type of task you want to create. In this case, we want to execute Python code, so we click Python. And as you can see, we have this new box where we can define the Python code to execute. And on the right, we have the corresponding task, which is the live representation of our data pipeline. So let's define the Python code here. To fetch an activity from the board API, we need to make an HTTP request. And for that, we can use the requests Python library. So type or for response equals to requests, which is the Python library to make HTTP requests get and then we pass the API. Finally, we want to return the result of this response as a JSON value. So we type r.json and this task will return the following output that you can see right there. Next, we need to define the API URL in our data pipeline. So you copy this URL, go back to the IDE and click here to access the environment and create a new variable. So you see variables variable type airflow and the key is API and the value is 
the URL of the API and then create the variable. So if you don't know what is a variable in Airflow, think of it as a way to store values. So now we have this variable with the name API and the URL as a value. We can just fetch this variable by typing variable dot get and the name of this variable API. As we use requests, we need to import it in the task. So here type import requests. And we can rename that task right there by fetch activity as defined in our data pipeline. So now you have this task, as you can see in the dependency graph, you see the data pipeline fetch activity. We can run it to verify that it works. To run this task, you click run cell and you wait a little bit. And as you can see, it works. Just under the task, you have the results and you see the JSON value with the activity. Go to a local thrift shop, maybe it will be different for you. But as you can see, we are able to fetch a random activity from the API. Pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, you haven't touched any Airflow concepts yet. You have just created a Python task that runs the following Python code, but still behind the scene, you have a fully functional data pipeline that has been generated for you and you will see that in a few seconds but for now let's create a second task to print this activity on the standard output click add cell and then python then rename the task print activity and here we want to print the activity but for that we need to use the output of the previous task how pretty simple you just use the task name so fetch activity and let's say we want to print only the activity. So activity. And as you can see, that creates automatically a dependency between fetch activity and print activity. So fetch activity will be executed first and then print activity. Let's verify that it works by running the task and we obtain the activity on the standard output. So congratulations because you have successfully created a data pipeline that fetches data from an API without even knowing or using any Airflow concept. This is truly amazing and that's why I love this tool. Even if I know Airflow, I can save a lot of time with a tool like this one. And if you are wondering what is the generated code behind the scene, well, just look at that. This is all the code that have been generated for you and this is all the code that you didn't have to make. In fact, you only focus on what your tasks do and that's it. All the rest is done for you with this Cloud IDE. So that's why I believe it's a wonderful way to author your data pipelines. Obviously, you can do much more than that. There are some limitations as well. If you want to know more, please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I wish you a wonderful day. Take care and see you for another video.